In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to use render passes and tags to isolate a person plus a 3D object and create a custom mask so that you can put it on a rectangle and move it anywhere you want in your scene. All right, so I'm starting with this scene here. I have a cowboy hat that I've imported. Uh, I use the AR library to import this from Sketchfab. And then I also use that to import the head occluder so that when the user moves their heads, we can't see through their head to the hat. And I've also added already this canvas with this wanted poster. And what we're going to do is take our person plus the hat and overlay them onto this poster. So you can see this hat clipping through the poster right now. So I'm going to select that material, advanced render options, turn off use depth test, turn off right to depth. And then I just want to make sure that hat um, is coming before the canvas. So I can move the face tracker up above. And that will do it. And if our canvas is down here, it'll render on top of everything and looks great. So let's go ahead and create a rectangle and material for our person. So I'm gonna select this one poster, hit control D. Let's rename this to person and hat. And I'll select this material, duplicate it as well. And let's rename person and hat mat. And we're going to come here. We're going to choose our person and hat material. You can't really see anything going on. So let's switch to 2D objects. And without selected, let's just resize it. Now we don't need to be exact. It's just a quick little example. So yeah, so here we have our new rectangle, but this is obviously not the right uh, image texture that we want. So Let's go ahead and select our material and we'll be using the patch editor to generate our texture. So instead of choosing it here, let's click this little arrow and let's get started in here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the scene render pass to isolate the hats from the poster and selectively render that onto a texture and ultimately put it on this um, person and hat rectangle that we've created here. So I'm going to select my device and I'm going to click on the create button next to default pipeline just to quickly get that created. All right, so this is just going to take um, camera textures, the background, whatever the device is rendering, um, all the objects contained underneath device. Now put that to the screen. Uh, so we don't want that. We want, let's bring our person hat material texture here. We actually want to output this to that texture. Uh, so if you connect that, you're gonna see that we have this error. Uh, it might be a little hard to see, but it says loop in custom render pipeline found cycle and connected components. So what's going on is our scene render pass is grabbing all the objects under device, which right now is everything, and is trying to output that onto this, this rectangle here but you can see that this is contained inside the objects here. So it's a loop. It wants to take everything and put it on this material here. That's on person hat. Uh, but then this is being used as input for there. And so it's kind of a big loop. So what we can do is we can either um, use just like the face tracker or we can create a null object to isolate just those objects. So I could drag this face tracker in or actually not the face. Tracker, if we, if we were to pull in some other object, let's just say the head occluder really quick, you can see that this is new and now a new object thing and we could plug something like that in. Or what will be a little easier and quicker is we can drag this canvas out of the whole thing. And now we don't have that loop anymore because the canvas is not included in this device here. Uh, so let's go ahead and delete this here. And perfect, we can see we have the person and the hat on top of the poster, which is what we want. Uh, now we just need to get rid of this background. So the first logical place to start is we're going to need a segmentation texture for the person. So let's select the camera, choose segmentation and choose um, person. And so that'll give us a few nodes. I'm going to move these down. Let's make the patch editor a little bit bigger while we're here. All right. So let's start uh, creating our uh, segmentation mask. So I'm going to 
pull this out and I want to unpack the values. And I also want to then pack them back together. And I'm going to make this a vector four. So these are just the red, green, and blue values. And then we're going to take our segmentation value. So I'm going to like to swizzle this just so we get a single channel. And we can just leave X, that's fine. Plug that into the alpha. Now if we put this into here, uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. Let's undock it. And you can see that we have um, our person isolated. We have the background clear, but we're cutting off a bunch of the hat. And that is because we don't have a mask for the hat. So to create that, we're going to use some render tags. So what are render tags? Now you might notice on the scene render pass that there's this section for tags. So even though we're passing in all the objects in this device section, we can actually isolate certain items with a tag. So I'm going to come to my cowboy hat, well, also my occluder. So let's go ahead and get this moved. Okay. So yeah, so I'm going to select my head occluder because we want this included. I'm going to come to tags. You might need to open that up. And I'm going to type hat. That's just a tag I'm going to use. You can have multiple tags. We just need the one. So hat. And then I'm going to look at this cowboy hat. And you can see there are multiple things here. So I'm just going to start at the bottom of the material. Let's type hat. And then we should grab the actual 3D model as well type hat, and that should be good. If not, we can kind of continue up this hierarchy adding the tag. All right, so we have our tags. Uh, what are we going to do now with that? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new scene render pass uh, to work with just the hat. We're going to remove the person from it and get just the hat. So to do that, I'm just going to select the scene render pass, hit Control C, Control V, Oh, I had this selected over here, so let's delete the extra hat. So make sure nothing's selected there. And let's copy and paste our scene render pass. All right, so we still want our same objects coming in. But now we're going to do just the hat. So I'm going to expand this. You can see we have just our hat showing up here. And the background is just black. We put this camera texture, you can see our person shows up. Now we don't want that, we want just the hat. Now what we can do is we can basically do like a blue screen uh, to create our mask. Now you might notice that the hat is dark, the background is black. Now this would probably work, but just to make it a bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and import a blue image that I created. So in my image editor, I just created um, just a small square image, just fill it with blue, so here's my blue value 0, 42, 255. The exact value doesn't matter for you. Just make sure you remember what these values are. So I'm going to keep that in mind. I'm going to import this image into Spark AR. All right, so I have my blue image here. I'm just going to drag it into here. And I'm going to use this for the background here. And now look at this. We have our hat against just a blue background. And we can use this to create a mask for our hats and combine it with our person segmentation mask. So to make that really easy, I'm going to come to the AR library and I'm going to search for chroma key. Oh, that's not it. Let's search for chroma. Here it is, chroma keying. So I'm going to select that and let's import free. And then if you get that little prompt, just choose your right project. And now that should be over here inside our assets. So I'm going to pull the chroma keying in. And for our texture, we want to pull this in. Our chroma key, I'm going to select that. And I'm going to put in my color values. So it was 0, 42, 255. That was mine. And that is going to give us our mask. So just to see what that looks like, I'm going to display that on here. So look at that. We have our hat. It is white. And everywhere else is transparent. So that is perfect. So what we can do now is I'm going to pull this out. So we swizzle 
I'll just grab the first channel, uh, red, so X, that works fine. I'll zoom in so you can see it. And I want to add this to the segmentation mask over here. So I'm going to move this pack over here. It's getting a little messy. So let's just pull this down here. Zoom in. So I'm going to add the person segmentation to the hat segmentation. Uh, zero would be black. One would be white. And so if we add that together, if there's any overlap, it still turns out white. I'm also going to clamp this because this can technically go up to value of two, which usually isn't going to cause problems, but sometimes with blending modes, it can be an issue. So just clamp it zero to one. We're going to use this for our new opacity channel. Now, if we connect this back up to our texture, you can see we have our person plus our hat. So let's zoom out really quick, do a quick recap. Um, Actually, let's go ahead and move these down so we can organize our scene a little bit better. Let's take a quick look. So we have our camera texture coming into our scene render pass with our just device with the objects. Um, we are getting all that, rendering it out, we get our person with the hat. Um, but to remove the background, we had to create a custom mask using the hat, we use the render tags to get just the hat, we use the chroma key to create the mask of the hat, we add it to our person segmentation texture, clamp it, mix it all together, and now we have this. And so we could actually select our person hat material and we could do fun things with blend mode, we could like multiply, make it kind of integrate into that a little bit better. I'll just go back to alpha, and the fun thing is if we come back to our 2D view here, we can actually move this and put it anywhere we want in our scene. And it's going to have our person and that 3D object that we selected. Uh, so this is a really nifty method if you need to kind of place a cutout somewhere and include a 3D model with that.